スーパーバイクワールドチャンピオンシップ第11戦日本ラウンド第1レースは地元の柳川明選手が見事に優勝第8戦のオー,ストレアオーストリア以来のシリーズ2勝目を挙げましたこれから行われる第2レースの方はどういった展開になるんでしょうかワールドスーパーバイク第11戦日本ラウンド第2レースここスポーツランド須郷から生中継でお伝えしてまいります放送席の解説は元ヤマハとホンダのバクトリーライダーで現在はスクーデリア奥村代表の奥村博さんです奥村さんどうぞよろしくお願いいたしますよろしくお願いしますえー、そしてピットからの情報は桜井志保リポーター実況担当土屋でお伝えしてまいりますえー、それでは早速レース直前のピット情報桜井さんから伝えてもらいましょう桜井さんはい桜井ですもうものすごいエンジンの音で鳥肌が立つほどですこちらの方ご覧の通り青空も覗いてだいぶ暖かい感じがしてきましたこの第2レースの模様またピットの方からもお伝えしますはいよろしくお願いいたしますえさて奥村さん先ほどの第1レース、はい、空の方がどんよりと曇っていて今にも雨が降り出しそうだってまあ実際降ったんだですけどもね、はい、この第2レースの方はどうやら日も差していてこのままドライのコンディションでいけそうな感じなんですがいかがでしょう、ね、いけるといいですね、全く天気ばかりは、うん、あの何とも言えませんけども、はいえーまあ、できたらあ最後まで、えー、なんとか持たせたいですよね、はい、そして第1レースを受けてのこの第2レース、はい、やっぱり見どころというと、もうコシンスキーということになりそうですかそうですねあの、タイトルが決まれば本当にあの嬉しいでしょうし、またあの第一レースの羽賀選手と柳川選手の素晴らしいデッドヒートがおそらく第二レースでも繰り広げられると思いますのでね、はいえー、注目したいですね。そうですね。はい、柳川選手がまあ優勝するようなことがあれば、第一レースに続いての完全制覇ということになりますからね。期待したいですね。はい。えー、そしてまあこの日本ラウンドが始まる前はやっぱりこのコシンスキーのチャンピオン決定か、それとも。えー、ポイントランキング2位につけているフォガティの巻き返しなるかということだったんですけれどもフォガティはコシンスキーよりも後ろでゴールインということでますます厳しくなってきましたねそうですねもしジョン・コシンスキー選手ーノーポイントでこのレースを終えても、えー、フォガティ選手が8位以内でゴールしなければあその時点で、えーシンスキー選手のタイトル決定しますのでね、はい、えかなりえホガティ選手にとっては厳しい状況になってしまいましたねそのコシンスキーが全現在375ポイントそしてホガティが317ポイントその差が58ポイントありますからこのレースでコシンスキーがホガティより前でゴールにすれば,ればもうこれで決まりですね決まりなんですよね、はいそしてそのフォガティの着順移管によってはやっぱりコシンスキーがこの日本で今シーズンのワールドチャンピオンに輝くかどうかというシーンがまあ見られるかもしれないということになっておりますさあそれではですねすで、えー、に先ほど行われました第一レースの模様ちょっと VTR で振り返ってみたいと思いますポールポジションから出た柳川選手そして同じくフロントローからまあ、スタートしたこの羽賀選手との激しいバトルが印象的でしたねそうですね前半から羽賀選手ガンガン飛ばして、えー、まあ柳川選手と2人,だ2人の激しい争いになりましたよね、えー、まあどちらかというとあのー、柳川選手がちょっと様子を見ながらチャンスが出れば前に出てそして羽賀選手はもう抜かれたらすぐ抜き返すそんなような印象を受けましたそうですねマシン的にちょっとあのー、羽賀選手のマシン伸びが悪いんでえー、もうああいう展開にせざるを得ないところありましたね、はいまあ、途中までは、えー、サイモン・クラファーなんかもね、えー、3位でこう感覚としてはそんなになかったかなと思ったんですけども本当に周回を重ねるごとに2人の一騎打ちという感じになりましたねこの2人のペースはちょっと普通じゃなかったですよね。はい、はいまあ、結果的には、えー、ファステストラップ4周目に柳川選手が記録した1分30秒338やっぱり1周1分30秒台のこの辺りのレベルの高い争いになりそうですかねかなりあの2人の話も聞いたんですけどももう滑りっぱなしってみたいな感じでしたからね、えー、よほどこのすぐ乗り慣れてかつ調子が出てないとあの走りはなかなか難しいかもしれません。えーまあこの第2レースの方もどうでしょう、羽賀選手ね、先ほど本当にまあちょっと悔しい2着という感じだったんで、そうですね、えー、羽賀選手はまだまだ走れるよっていうア
ピールしてましたしね、えー、レースもっと続けたかったっていうのが彼の本音でしたね。はいまあ、本当に結果的には心配された雨の方が途中から落ちてまいりまして、えー、レースの方は21周で、まあ、赤旗フラッグということになりましたね、はいはいまああのー、レースが3分の2以上消化していましたのでね、えー、これでレース成立ということになりましたそうですね、はいまあ、雨の降る中危険なレースを続けるよりはということになりましたがそれにしてもたまたまその集会の時に前にいたのが柳川選手と。いうことで本当にもう分かりませんでしたからね,ね彼はもう本当ラッキーだってましたね、うん、まあでもあ,ああいうことは予想しての動きだったようで,あそうですかさすが、ね、あの早めに前でとかないとまずいぞっていうのは柳川選手自身がちゃんと感じたそうなんで、ええ、あれは作戦勝ちとも言えますそうですねまあこの点ではね羽賀、えー、選手の方が前にいたんですけれども柳川選手の優勝ということになったわけでありますさあそしてこの第二レース見事に制して完全制覇となるのかどうかどうでしょう、奥村さん、やっぱり第1レース勝ったということで気持ちの上でもだいぶその地元のプレッシャーというものから解放されて気持ち的にも、えー、楽ですよ、ねえー、予選もあとはポールポジションでしたしね、えー、第1レースも勝ってる。もうあのー怪我さえしなければいっちゃえみたいなところありますよね、はいえー、現在フロントロー、スターティンググ,ラグリッドの方をご覧いただいておりますけれども、このね吉川航選手もね、なかなかしぶといですよね、えーまあ、第,第1レースあの、5位で終わったんですけど、このところちょっと。Back while they're lining up and preparing on the grid in Sugo in Japan. Gives us a few moments just back here in the studio. They're going to line up exactly the same again on the grid in Sugo.、Uh, what changes do you think some of the riders will have made for the second race, considering the conditions weather wise have changed slightly? Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether it's dry again there now, isn't it though? It certainly、um, is. We can look over our shoulder and we can see here that.、Uh, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, if they notice anything in the first race, a slight improvement on the suspension. Maybe on the tar wise, you know, someone found they wanted to go harder or softer. There's a couple of changes there they can make.、Um, We heard Carl Fogarty say that、uh, he was keen for it to be wet.、Um, is that because it gives him an easier life or the Ducati works better or, or what would you be your opinion? Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a, there's a chance that, you know, in the wet people come off easier as well. So maybe it could open the championship <laughs> up again. In Carl Fogarty's case, that might not be a good thing, judging yeah, by well, how many times he's been up the road this year. Yeah, well, then again, maybe it's someone else's turn.、Um, So, yeah, I mean, I can understand why he wants it to be wet, and maybe he feels he's much more confident in the wet and he can come through better. Well, there's a big difference now in the point standings. John Kaczynski has a huge、mm. lead. Do you, I mean, do you think there is,、uh, even with 75 points still available, I mean, surely John must have one hand on the trophy now?、Uh, in, he's got it, in my view. You know, barring, I don't know. What about Aaron Slight, though? He's got something to aim at, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he has, and、um, you know, I think he will be going as hard as he can to beat Carl.、Um, what, so、about the, what about some of the Japanese? We've got a situation where this is the last chance, and Julian Ryder was bringing up something quite neatly in the break a moment ago that Yamaha haven't had a race win this year at world championship level. If, if Hagar manages to do the business this afternoon in the second、yeah. race, it will be Yamaha's only international or major international race win. Of this kind of, of racing. Yeah, I mean, it was a shame in a way the first race got stopped because, you know, it was definitely going to be a really exciting last couple of laps.、Um, no, it'd be very good. I mean, it's a good running for Yamaha anyway, whatever, but if he could carry off a win in the second one, yeah, they'd be well pleased. Who's, who's your money on them for, for race two?、Um, well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see Crafer win it, actually, just because. Well, I know, think we'd all like to see yeah, Crafer you know, win it. He, he's, he's sort of going out soon. That, I mean, that would be nice, but I think in reality it's going to be Yanagawa again. Um, then, then Crafer, then Hager. Oh, Hager third this time round. Well, we can take a look now. Live shots behind us here. This is the grid in Sugo. They're lining up, preparations, and as you said, James,、um, it,、uh, it has dried, or as you were supposing, it has dried there. And they're clearing the grid now, just moments away from the warm up lap. Oh, that's a nice shot. Thank you very much. It's、uh, cleared completely then. We've got nice bright blue clouds with little fluffy bits and the like.、Um, uh, Julian Ryder, I think that must be your cue, bright and fluffy. Thank you, Keith. I'll talk about that intro later.、Uh, on the news front from the pits, Honda tell us that Aaron Slight's rear tyre 
was gone away basically with 10 laps to go so Aaron is likely to race this second race with a slightly harder rear compound tyre in John Kaczynski says his front tyre was pushing badly at the end of the race so I don't actually know what he'll do there's the grid the front row of course they line up exactly as they did for race one with Yanagawa the winner of that first race in pole Yoshikawa who was fifth in second Hagar who was second in the first race he's third and Simon Crapar who was third he's fourth on the grid Pierre Francesco Keeley leads the front row he dropped to where was it 12th by the end of the first race Bon and we're back with live shots for you. The second road is Bon Tempe DNF, Fujiwara on the Suzuki who came eighth, and John Kaczynski who was ninth as they head off on their warm up lap, led by number 51, Wataru Yoshikawa. Back to the grid, Shinichi Ito who finished 11th, leads row three, Katsu Katsuaki, get it right, Julian Kitagawa on the Suzuki. He ended up fourth from a row three start in the first race. Aaron Slight ended up sixth, and Serizawa ended up 10th. So the guys on row three had a fairly good time in the first race, which is one jet for Carl Fogarty, who ended up 13th, just one in front of Scott Russell, Shinya Takeishi, and the other Fujiwara, that is Norihiko Fujiwara, the Yamaha man. Nice to hear you struggling with a bit of pronunciation for a change, Julian, as well. Do you, I've do you mean pronunciation? I thought it was me. Thank you for that. <laughs> Straight back at me. <laughs> if ever I get to Julian, I've got to make sure my wheel is well and truly up the inside if I'm going to get the corner, haven't I, really? I like to think I learn over the years, Keith. <laughs> so then, we're taking a look at uh, from the overhead shots, and these have been brilliant. That, oh, that, wonderful. That, that pass that Hager made at the chicane was incredible on Yenagawa. That's a contender for move of the year, isn't it? That? Yeah, very interesting though. James Hayden back in the studio saying that, uh, well, we wouldn't have seen that um, just a few years ago because they'd have both been in the dirt, I think. <laughs> there would have been paintwork swapped at that particular point. Well, Hagar, only 23, Keith, but he's won the Japanese Championship this year. He has experience in Europe. He did Thunderbikes for that year with Grand Prix, so he knows the ropes. So at that chicane, they come to the line now for the start of race two. It's going to be a real gem and tactically very interesting as well, I think, from this point of view. I mean, I, we're going to have to keep an eye on the old points, aren't we? Well, Keith, basically, if Kaczynski finishes in front of Foggy, he's world champion. That's the bottom line. Do you think that'll be foremost in Kaczynski's mind? He's not going to try and win. He's going to do no. what he did in the first race. He's not looked like a race winner here at Sugo. I don't mean that... Um, he couldn't start, could he? That was the problem again. Well, I mean, starting's bad, but his qualifying position as well, eighth on the grid. I know it's only fractions of a second here, but I think that... Uh, to get involved in a dispute for the lead with some men that are really keen to win here on their <laughs> understatement, home ground. Isn't it it the is an team. understatement because I think that the Japanese have tidied their act up from a riding point of view. They're not quite the the mean and desperate people that they used to be, where they you know win or crash was was some. That's out of date. That is it is out of now. date. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, you know, all the words that we used to use in our commentaries from from years ago don't fit with with the modern Japanese way of riding. Certainly, these guys nowadays are every bit as good as Europeans, Americans, Australians, whatever. And I think that we've seen that today with the two men that uh, finished first and second. Very much so. And I think that, that Kaczynski will want to just keep his nose clean if he can and obviously finish in front of Carl Fogarty. He looks like he's got the beating of Carl Fogarty on the racetrack and in the championship. So I think at the end of the day, we we basically are going to see uh, John Kaczynski crowned as world champion here in Sugo in Japan. And of course, he's favourite of Honda's. Honda love him. He loves Honda. And uh, it couldn't happen better than being in Japan. Wait for the start then. We're about to start race two here at Tugo. And go, Green it does. And the Yamaha again of Hager. He flew off the line. But coming through this time is Kaczynski in third oh, place. Right. From the second row. Whoever said John could. Oh, that's a big crash. Oh, that's a nasty one. Oh, run. that is indeed because that's taken everybody out. Hodgson takes to the dirt there. The car was down. It Slight's was, down. Ito's yes, down. Yeah, Giorgio Bontempi was the man who started all that. From the middle there this could well be stopped this race because there's a lot of motorbikes to get cleared up it's a long lap round here 3.7 kilometers but they may just find that they've got to stop this race because there's a lot of bikes in the dirt 36 there norihiku fujiwara is there that is keely oh there's a whole grid oh, there is. watoru yoshikawa on 51 54 goes off that shinya nakatani Oh, got they've got to stop this because there's too many bikes in the way. There is Bontempi's bike to the left. Nobody's got hurt, which is a miracle. Uh, it was, actually. You're quite right there. I won't take that away. Right, then. Will the red flag come out? We'll have to wait and see. The marshals have got a lot of work to do. It's only going to be when they come out of the chicane we're going to find out for sure. I think they're going to clear this track, you know. I think they've time. done a remarkable job, you know, Keith, and thank the 
the powers that no one was hurt in a, you know, in a crash with a bunch like that. That is usually yeah. an awful situation. But significantly, if Aaron Slight has been taken out of the equation... It was Ito, Keith, not Slight. Ah, there is Kaczynski. You're right, because Ito's joined in the same... He's in the same colours. ...colours this year. Me. You're absolutely right. I didn't spot his number at all. So then, over the line, and we've got a red flag. No, we haven't. Harger leads Trafar, leads Kaczynski. Leads the two Suzuki's, then it's Akira Yanagawa. There is Aaron Slight on bike two. Sorry, Aaron, mate. Glad you kept out the sand. Of course, uh, I was uh, already Ooh, thinking... Now, it's pretty much off the racing line. Well, it's not off the racing line. Someone falls off, of course, but uh, all the debris is off the track and most of the bikes are out of the sand pit. That was a mammoth task to get them all out of there. Well, give the marshals credit for that one. Hagar, though, the man on the Yamaha leads from Simon Crafar. Oh, and sparks flying off again. We can take another look at it now. Let's have a look at it. Well, that was a bit of a cleaner start than race one, I would uh, hazard to say, but well, it was Bon Hagar. Tempe's on the second row, Keith. He started it. Well, he's the one that uh, basically lost it in the middle here. If you watch Bon Tempe there, the third of the green bikes, right in the middle of your picture. Watch for Bon Tempe coming down into the right-hander. Hagar hits the brakes. John Kaczynski brilliantly gets around the outside of Crafar, but not, <laughs> as Crafar tips in in third place. Then the third, Kawasaki, wait for it. Yep, there it, it goes. goes. Bon Tempe, a, an unfortunate high side, just trying to squeeze the power on and wipes out. Oh, and that Shinichi, was Shinichi Ito is about to hit him. Bon Tempe, I'm talking about, while others take uh, Watoru Yoshikawa there, picking himself up in the middle of the track. Meanwhile, back with the race. Ron lap two, or nearly at the end of it. Hagar from Krafar. It's almost rhyming. Then it's a Suzuki. Then it's John Kaczynski. So Kitigawa there on 37. Kaichi Kitigawa who I'm used to seeing on a Kawasaki for and previous me, years. And me, I've already made that mistake. <laughs> yes. Hagar over the line, breaks into turn one. Very far like next up, Kitty Gower, Kaczynski. There is Kitty Gower on the lucky strike Suzuki. It's the best you've seen those colours all year. Well, There's Yana Gower in the blue crash out, going through in seventh, is that? Fujiwara, though, on the other Suzuki, is behind John Kaczynski in fifth place. Akira Yana Gower is back in sixth place. That's a bit of a disastrous start from him. Hagar could have this all his own way, unless, of course, Crafar decides to win one of these World Super Bikes. Oh, oh feet off the Suzuki foot there from Keiichi Kitigawa. Kitigawa, all feet. There was Fogarty going through on 444. Well, 44 is Sean Emmett. Sean Emmett is out there riding for the Red Bull team. With damaged knee ligaments from Donington Park last weekend. Yes, but I mean, he's not badly hurt, that's for certain. He was scheduled to come here in the studio and decided to get the weekend off by going out to Sugo and riding for an in Indonesian industrialist. Fastest lap then from Aaron Slight on lap two. So slightly trying to make up some time as well. And the more people he can get between him and Carl Fogarty will do his second place cause a whole load of good. It will mean that he'll keep the number two plate, of course, which he'd much prefer for a number one. Well, it looks to me now, seeing John Kaczynski go through with the number three bit on there, Keith, he's got one hand on the World Championship trophy. Like most guys at this level who win a title, he wants to be on the roster to save it, doesn't he? I think they'll see him work hard to get the third place, Keith. Yeah, I think so, but then again, knowing riders like a new third place doesn't count anywhere near as much as first place, and uh, you've heard them say it before, there's nothing like winning third place I don't know, it'd be nice to be on the rostrum, possibly, but that won't be the way that's that he wants to win a world championship. There is number 52 in, that's Shinichi Ito, the man that I misidentified because I saw the number two well, we as saw, Aaron Slight. Well, we saw Kaczynski go through, then we saw a Castrol Honda in the dirt, didn't we? And with a number two on the edge of it. Yes, there's even more reasons to excuse your, the, our what, mistake. Which is uh, why I misread it. The five was buried in the sand at the time. It's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it's it. It's a good one, as excuses go. Look at this kid, look at Harger. Yeah, look at Crafar, though. Crafar really has picked up the pace in this second race and hey hey has got a lot of work on here because if Crafar catches him then Crafar <laughs> is going to be the man well, he hasn't won a world superbike race in a hundred and five goes and he really wants to win one of these races he goes to Grand Prix next year so he has just three chances left to take a world championship superbike race win well, Keith recovers we'll look at the gap between the Kawasaki of Crafar the Yamaha of Hagar and Kitagawa uh -oh. puts in a fastest lap on the Suzuki. We've not been able to say that all year. Kitagawa riding a Suzuki. Kaichi Kitagawa making a very fast lap around here. I had to look and check twice then because I, I almost found that unbelievable because Suzuki really has struggled over the last the two years. The team has struggled. Absolutely, since Joy, what, you mean Kitagawa's not the works one? I meant the regular World Superbike team, having had the embarrassment of being beaten by Troy Bayliss in Australia, now have the embarrassment of uh, the local boys. Well explained, thank you very much. But just about here, in this World Superbike race, every bike's a works bike, I think we'll find. Yep. 
him down then. Hagar has stretched his lead very slightly over Krafar. We're looking back at John Kaczynski. He's now past Akira Yanagawa. In fact, he was for a while. What am I talking about? Kaczynski and Yanagawa. Yanagawa now lining up Kaczynski, I, I should say. I think that's more like it. For Keith. the fourth place. Look at behind him, Scott Russell. Yes. Not before time either, Uncle Scott. With all those Yamahas going faster. And another fastest lap. Guinea Gower on the Suzuki. Did it on lap four this time. Did it on lap three last time. He's absolutely flying on that Suzuki. So Kitty Gower, Kaichi Kitty Gower on bike 37. Watch out for him because he's on a mission. Unlike the works bikes, the, sorry, the regular well, championship bikes. Is that better? No, he's, thank you. He's a Dunlop runner. Let's not have a look. Runner. Agar, Krafar, Kitty Gower, Kaczynski, Yanagawa, and Scott Russell, one Good of our favourite men. You wouldn't have believed it a few years ago no. when we used to talk <laughs> about it. <but laughs> And he's, he's still nice to us as well, I can't understand it. Slighty back in ninth place, Fogarty in 12th, that is the significance here. Well, as this race, Emmett up to 13th, that's a good ride from him. As we look down, Mike Hale on the work Suzuki, <laughs> the regular work Suzuki, Hodgson in 22nd, he must have got caught up in that. Uh, I, I saw in him LA. sand trapping. He did uh, go for a sand trap, that's right, I think I mentioned it at that particular yeah. point. Look at Yanagawa, Keith, he's Look at down. Scott Russell, yes. Julian. <laughs> yes, all right then. Look at all of them. Here's the regular World Superbike guys, Kaczynski, Yanagawa and Scott Russell. But what I was getting to a little earlier on with that graphic was that Carl Fogarty is really losing major points to, to Aaron Slight. Yep, for the second place for in the, the championship. Second place, and I mean, I, I don't know, he said he's never interested in winning. It'll be second or tenth, he doesn't care. I've right. heard that quote so often from Carl Fogarty, and we're going to find out in this race and, of course, in uh, the last round in Indonesia, just how much he cares about second place. I bet Aaron's on a good bonus for, from Honda to have first and second in the championship. I don't think Carl would care. There's Hargis fastest lap now. Well, that's no big surprise, is it, on lap five? I don't think uh, Carl would be so worried about finishing with the number two plate, but he will be worried about finishing behind Aaron Slight. I think uh, there is a point to be made there. There is Carl Fogarty, two times World Superbike champion. He's not going to be this year. And it's six and a half seconds between Harger and Fogarty in 12th place. So yet again, Harger's stringing them out, Keith, in just a handful of laps. Yeah, he really is making a bit of a mess of the uh, usual world superbike closeness, isn't he? Because he's, he's blown off Simon Krafar. Krafar is dropping back now. And Krafar has got a battle all of his own going on now for that second place. Being chased by the Suzuki, as far as I can see. Of Kitigawa. It is Kitigawa. Kitigawa's right there with Krafar. Well, if Yamaha win there, I think this is a, a quote that I got from you back in the break a little while ago. If Yamaha win this race, you explain. Well, this season, Yamaha not won a world championship race at Grand Prix or at World Superbike. And in Grand Prix, Keith, I can tell you that uh, Arve finished third in the, in the Aussie Grand Prix. Yamaha have not won a race in a Grand Prix this year for the first time in 34 years. So for the honour of Yamaha Motor Company, Harga san go out and win this one. Well, it's probably the only one that Yamahas are going to win this year if Harga manages to do it here in World Superbike. He's going to Indonesia as well on this bike. Well, you know, Indonesia might be a slightly different kettle of That's because it's compared Kaczynski with, territory yeah, for my say, money. Compared with Sugo, I think we're going to see something different. But it will be different to see a Yamaha win today and possibly a Suzuki second, which will be the highest position they've had all uh, since they've been running these bikes in World Superbike. That's Yanagawa. Disaster for Yanagawa. Gear lever. Yeah, it looks like he might have had a bit of a coming together somewhere. He's snagging the gear lever by hand. I wonder if he, he was very close to Bon Tempe when he went down. What if he managed to uh, bend the gear lever? Yeah, on, definitely on there's something not... Yeah, it's hanging yeah, look, down. It's hanging down it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dear, lost the gear lever. Uh, so, Yanagawa out. No, no double. Left to his compatriot. Oh, this man. Looking smoother than he did in the first race. Well, he hasn't got a Kira all over him. <laughs> yes, which is a, probably a great relief to him. So, Harga then being left alone for the minute. Yeah. Of course, uh, the problem that he will have is in the Kitty Gower shape, yep. which is in third at this minute. And Kaczynski, is that Kaczynski in fourth, closing up? Kaczynski absolutely on the case in fourth place. Look at that. Kaczynski's been slowly but surely working away there in fourth. I think he wants the rostrum, Keith. He wants to stand on the rostrum as well, champion. Expect a second uh, fastest lap any minute, that's for certain. I think you're right, Keith. Kaczynski, he's got relatively fresh air in front of him, not too many around him. Look at he's ghosted through, hasn't he? He's just picked them off one by one. As Very we watch normal. Harger looking super. Now, here's the start from above. Watch the third green bike getting squeezed now. Yeah, he's right on the inside there, being lent on terribly. But it's not. that's not the problem. It's this bit where he turns it on now. There it goes, high side, over the top. And uh, Bon Tempe, he's had a great closing season this year. I mean, it's unbelievable how well he's done. 
that overhead shot, Yenagawa was clear of him. So yes, that clearly yeah. the problem was yeah. not due to Bontempi's bike. There's also one of those riders went down almost in sympathy. Kaczynski fastest luck. Oh, oh, who's a did, clever boy? What did I say? Anyway, Akira Yanagawa comes in for running repairs. I think he'll call out a day because it's a waste of time just going around for the sake of it. Yanagawa, yes, that means Gilliver gone. Flopping about. <laughs> oh, and again. Kaczynski, well... He wants to win the race. I, you see, I just couldn't believe that he would want just a podium. I, you know, like when you win a world championship, which he's about to do, you want to go out and win the race if you can get the full yeah. set. The body out. language there says a lot, doesn't it? This consulate, indeed. <laughs> John Kaczynski in four. Has he got enough time? Well... Akira Yanagawa is going to have to wait for Sentol in a week's time, I think, before he gets a chance to do it. I'm sure Ak Akira Yanagawa must have thought he was on for a double win. It would have been his first double, of course, Kawasaki's what, first since Gobert last year in Australia. Here comes Kaczynski in fourth place. Well, if he wins this race, he's going to be so disappointed because we've only got Jonathan Green out there, not Susie Perry. <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> How dare you suggest such a thing? <laughs> John Kaczynski, fourth place. Will he be able to improve on it? The, uh, uh, well, fairly soon, I think. Experience he's... says yes over the last few weeks. This man has been brilliant at picking his way through. Whether he's got the pace to catch Noriyuki Hagar, we will have to find out as the race progresses. A long way left in this race to go yet. He's the first Michelin runner as well to make life interesting. Yes, he, sure. said he had front tyre problems in the first race because he said it was pushing towards the end of the race and he had to just like, knock it back and concentrate on finishing the race. That was the quote. Agar back to Kaczynski, 2.5 seconds. Miserable. And closing. Looking back down the track, there is. Well, that's uh, Takeda. There he is, coming out of the slipstream. Carl Fogarty, so, so far back and looking not particularly. Uh, and the guy in front of him, Keith, was that teenager who yes. won the first race last year, Takeda. Yuichi Takeda, he was what, 17 last 17 year? 17 or 18, something ridiculous. Unbelievable. So then, Carl Fogarty following the youngster round and looking like he'll probably put a move on him in a minute, but he doesn't look as if he's in too big a hurry for it. Now then, Kaczynski, right on the case of number 37 as we look at Akira Yanagawa's bikes both parked. There is Kaczynski after Keiichi Kitagawa on the Suzuki. So we keep to say that, don't we? The veteran, the 30-year-old. Oh, dear me, 30 years old. Well, compared to most of the uh, young Japanese gents we've been talking about today, Keith. Hard to believe that John Kaczynski's still only 29 considering how long he's been around. I was going to bring that up later, actually. It's incredible, it's, uh, isn't it? Yep. And he doesn't lie about his age, either. No, that is his age. Yep. Unusually, he does. <laughs> That's not unusual about John telling the truth. It's unusual for riders to be truthful about their, their ages. Hey, a little worried about people oh. invading the culture box there, Julian. <laughs> I Definitely, Keith. Those are... Haga leads. Very far second. Then it's 37, Keiichi Kitigawa, followed by number three, John Kaczynski. Who's now followed by Scott Russell. <laughs> I could enjoy that, but if Scott is uh, on the move, we can enjoy that because he has been so good this year, Scott Russell. That bike he's been given has not always worked, but Scott Russell, he's done a Simon Cray bar, he's given 110% every time. The team love him to bits, and he's so happy with him, he's signed for another two years. Yeah, that is, I mean, like, you've got to say, he's dug real deep this Absolutely year, Scott just. Russell. He, he's, he's got on bikes that he's crashed and gone straight back out there. He really has shown some commitment, and I think... A few people questioned that when he yeah. came back from the Grand Prix. They didn't know whether he was just coming back for a play in Superbikes. Hagar, Krafar, Kitigawa, top three. Kaczynski right there. Scott Russell just a little second behind him. And then Takeshi in sixth place. Woof, yes. back time. I don't think John Kaczynski has the pace, you know, to make this job. doesn't look it. They've done it by now, wouldn't they, given his form? Look at that. He's yeah. tying that thing. Well, You've got to be close in on Kaczynski to see him working, haven't you? Yeah, but it's a low gear turn, flat out up the hill. And really, the way the bikes are moving around there, it's no big deal. That's just what you're going to get when you try to chuck all the horsepower through that rear tyre. It's a big deal to those of us who normally just ride on the road, Keith, with our wheels in line and not spinning, I assure you. You, you don't spin your wheels, Julian. If no I do, wheelies, Keith, it's no preparatory to me falling off. <laughs> So, Kaczynski in fourth place, it's good enough for the World Championship. Is it good enough, good enough for John Kaczynski to grab the World Championship? Only time will tell, and Scott Russell now on bike 22. Looking like he means business to me. Well, yeah, he always looks a bit that way. Doesn't he just? There is your race leader. Hagar goes through, Krafar goes through on six, then it's 37. <laughs> Remarkably, Kitty Gower on the Suzuki, then it's three. 
which is John Kaczynski. Oh, and who was that? That was Scott. Russell. Russell on the dirt. So Russell goes motocrossing. And a quick look behind just to check. Yeah, yeah. see, it, well, that's to see who he filled in. Uh, yeah, yes, in speed two speedway and motocross style, he was sprayed with pebbles. Right, Looking at the top ten, slight in seventh, Bobby in tenth. He's now got past Takeda, and Sean Emmett up to 12th. Good ride, Sean. Yeah, I was trying to say earlier on that uh, the old Red Bull team, an Indonesian industrialist, apparently, is trying to put a, a team together for next year and has hired the team, basically, to uh, take on the, the other works teams in both Japan and Indonesia. So there's an interesting development mm. there. So we'll wait to see bit whether bit any of, of that... Gossip, Sean Emmett riding for that team has upset his British team, I am led to believe. The GSE, they are not happy. So yep. Groundwork South East, a little bit nose out of joint, I think, with Sean taking up this ride at the last minute. But, well, we see that occasionally. They'll sort themselves out in the end. Here's Scott Russell. So good to watch this year. He got the, has he got the fin on the crash out or not? Is that gone? Dear me. Superstitious, Scott. Obviously so. There is fourth place man and world championship leader. He is just a short distance by, comparatively, certainly by the season's length, just a short distance away from taking his first World Superbike Championship title to go with his World 250cc Grand Prix title as long ago as 1990. Yep. For Yamaha, that was. He then rode 500 Grand Prix for Yamaha for a couple of years, had a couple of wins just, rode for Kajiva as well, another couple of wins. So you go down John Kaczynski's CV, and it was oh. a year off before he well, got the Super. he rode the 250 Gatti. Suzuki and uh, fell out with uh -huh. them big style, yep. got on with the team not, yep. and then... Uh, after Assen got sacked, I think, basically, we can say. John Kaczynski, he'll probably argue that he didn't, but Kaczynski went out of racing for a whole year. It's very rare that a rider takes a year out. And then comes back to anything like success. Straight into this level. Yeah. Mind you, he is a very unusual character, is uh, little John. He's a very unusual character. He's a very unusual talent as well. He's an astonishing talent. Well, I think they're all uh, beginning to realise that in World Superbikes. Yeah. It, uh, it just shows the level that Superbike is now at. It, it, mind you, the thing for me this year is it's been... You know, cat and mouse between Carl Fogarty and John Kaczynski. And there was an old saying that's been in the back of my head that Kevin Schwantz once said about John Kaczynski when, uh, when Kaczynski had been going good before, where Schwantz turned around and said that he, he'll come apart like a cheap watch halfway through the season. Mm. And I think significantly this year, his mental stability has been a feature. He has been able to really hang on in there. Kudos to Neil Tuxworth, who's in the middle of your picture there, for keeping the team together, I think. Well, keeping the team together, or more significantly, I think, apart. keeping the team apart. <laughs> yes, thank you, Julian. <laughs> or managing the situation very well, in that's, either case. That's the phrase, I think, that we can use for Neil Tuxworth, the British team manager, of course. This team, based in Louth, up in Lincolnshire, of all places, it's like... Uh, not that there's anything wrong with Louth, of course, it's just one of those places that takes about three hours to get to from, from anywhere, any, from any major place. So, Hagar then, race leader Off and, and fastest lap. I don't think that here we're going to see Here comes John, Keith, today. here comes John. Well, if he gets up the inside, will he hold on to it? I think he will. <laughs> Kitty Gower, though, on that Suzuki may well dispute that. I would normally say that once Kaczynski's made a pass, he's made it stick this year, but Kitty Gower may be a different kettle of fish. We'll wait and see. He certainly won't let it lie, that's for sure. Of course, Kitagawa, Suzuki wide and nothing, no interest at all in the championship. And who gets it? He's just out there to get a Suzuki on the rostrum, if he does, for only the third time this year. Well, that's the podium then for John Kaczynski. You're right about the Suzuki man, aren't you? Well, He's right in the wheel tracks. Well, when it comes to uh, in the break, when it comes to uh, push and shove, in the tight stuff, you can bet the Japanese are going to be right on the case there. But once Kaczynski has got a bit of air between him and the Suzuki, don't you? The Honda is so very, very fast in a straight line that uh, Giddy Gower has got to be right with him. And it grunts up over the hill, that Honda, doesn't it? It's a real power, power part of the course there. The Suzuki man riding very well indeed to stay in touch, Kitagawa. Now then, 10 laps to go in this race. Haga is well off the front now. Crayfar's second place is under threat from Kaczynski. You've always got to say that when Kaczynski is this close in. Kitty Gower is back in fourth, Russell is still fifth, Takishi is sixth, Aaron Slight is seventh now, Fujiwara eighth, Serizawa ninth, Fogarty is tenth. Okay, reasonable points, but he's got all the well, the two main men in front of him, which he really won't be happy with. Uh, Carl is, is not having a good end of season. Albacetti was a disaster. Oh. He knew if he was behind coming to Sugo, he was going to have a major, major problem here. He wasn't expecting this race to be very good. In fact, if you look back historically, Japan has been one of those ones that has given him the worst kind of surprises. Yeah, win, crash, win, crash for a couple of years. So at the end of the day, he wasn't expecting much, and uh, he pretty much had resigned himself after Albacete to losing the championship 
and certainly nothing he's doing this weekend other than fulfilling his commitments to Ducati, I think is the uh, phrase for it, and probably preparing for 98, certainly mentally. And certainly he goes next year not with the Virginia Ferrari run factory team, but with the Francis Batta run Corona team. Francis Batta, very good operator. That I can't dispute. The big question, and obviously we're struggling very slightly with this, is what will happen to Don Kaczynski? If he get, he's going to take the number one plate in World Superbike. Let's be positive about that. You say he'll stay Assuming in World Mick Superbike. Assuming stays in Grand Prix. You say he'll stay, but all our information, all my information, points to him going to the Grand Prix. The only place I've read that and heard that is from English sources. I have not seen it from any other journalistic source but in any other country. It has been a direct quote from the boss at Honda. Interesting it interesting a, point it's a, a quote it's a direct quote there is no ambiguity yeah, from the Milan show I understand. it's a direct quote yep. from the boss of honda and at the end of the day whoever printed it doesn't matter the fact is yep. it was in motorcycle news british press and the fact of the matter is it was a good quote it's a great quote and if that's the case the number one plate doesn't stay in world superbike that's it my goes argument Grand Prix. I, my belief is there are more than what's more than one boss at honda of course uh, hrc honda motor co honda r d it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting year, whatever, but I firmly believe that the point you just made is that Honda will want number one plate in every class for their 50th anniversary year. Yeah, but with a team like that, you very rarely get someone from the higher echelons of it actually making a quote to say that if John Kaczynski wins the World Superbike Championship, yep. he will go to 500 I grand. I quite agree, Keith. I quite Let's agree. go back with the race anyway. We're going to find out enough about that, and of course you'll see all about it right here. But Ray Farr in second place on bike six is under attack from number three, John Kaczynski, the man who will be world champion today. And uh, there is 41. That is Hagar, Noriyuki Hagar. He is leading this race by an absolute mile, and I mean that almost literally. Uh, but he is going to be the only man on a Yamaha winning a major race in the Grand Prix of World Superbikes this year. This will be the only race that Yamaha have won. This afternoon, of course, it was uh, Norifumi Abe on another Yamaha that finished on the podium. Anybody watching this? Mick Doohan packed up and Crivier won the 500 Grand Prix today, the final round in Australia. But here, it's not all over yet for the World Superbike Championship, very nearly. Yep, I think we're in, uh, heading for the on-course. It's going to make Centile interesting, because Marga is going to Centile on the same bike. This is the works bike we've seen all year, run by David Brivio, the team out of Belgarda Yamaha in Italy. Uh, I'm sure it's his usual Japanese bike with a Belgarda bearing on, of course. But, uh, oh, oh, here we go, Scotty. Scott. Scotty having a look. I can't believe that uh, the man leading this race is that much faster than Scott Russell. I think that... Uh, we'll find again, out in centre. I always worry about uh, coming to Sugo. We get a distorted viewpoint on why people are going quick. You really never know what Yamaha have been running on the dyno for the entire year, waiting for this race. And they and test at this track, Yamaha, Absolutely. As well. This track is their track, so at the end of the day, Haga, he's a great rider. And he's a we, real talent, And we've he? seen him go so quick here before, but if he goes to Central in Indonesia, I think we're going to find a... It's going to be a bit of a leveller, I think, when we get to Indonesia. Yeah, it'll be interesting, but if Haga is coming to World Superbikes full-time next year, we're going to get a little taster, aren't we, in Central of just what the kid has to offer. There he goes, he's gone through, then it's Crafar, then it's Kaczynski. Oh, Scotty. And Scotty on 22, looking for that fourth place now to try and get past 37 Keiichi Kirigawa. And behind him it's Shinya Takeshi on the Yamaha, and yes, the Kawasaki. absolutely, number 39 there, riding great as well, Shinya Takeshi. And he is closed right in, so Takeshi in sixth place, just a couple of tenths off Scott Russell. So fourth, <laughs> fifth and sixth are disputing ground. Here they are. Great race, great race. We've had a couple of stunning races here. That dice between Yanagawa and Hagen in the first And Slighty closing on them as well. Is he? Aaron that? Slight is closing he is. in. Number two, Aaron Slight. So, if Slight can put these guys... Be oh, did you see that? <laughs> Shinya nice and Dyson sideways on there. I should say Shinya, Shinya, Shinya. rather. Sorry, yep. Shinya. 37. Oh, and again, Scotty looking at the inside. Not seriously there, though. But my point before I got all carried away again was Aaron Slight on bike number two is closing in on these and if he can put these three between him and Carl Fogarty oh, yes. he will pretty much be on Carl Fogarty's tail going into the final round in Indonesia and could make it a Honda 1-2 in the World Championship and not only will Honda have won the World Superbike Championship for the first time uh, third time the first time as in on the RC45 thank you um, it will have, in their recent four year run I'm trying to talk about on modern, this motorbike modern times on this particular type of bike they will also have created history 
with a 1-2 for a team. Never been done before Correct. in World Superbikes. Correct. As here comes that Kawasaki of Shinya Takeshi. Yeah, but he's got Scott on the inside. Yeah, so won't get past him there, my boy. Yeah, if you want to do that, try doing it up the inside. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, Scott is just going to push you straight out. But it, it's getting to be a bit of a battle now. And you're right, but Aaron is closing in as these three start to duke it out amongst themselves. Then he goes to the inside this time. Oh! And he's and down, now, down goes Scotty up the inside and he's down. He's gonna have words with him. Not happy at all. Oh, and he's uh, not agreeing. Scott Russell, not happy with that. Neither was the Japanese. No, the Japanese thought it was a bit of a banzai attack. <laughs> I think Scott reacted back actually in. Uh, oh, don't talk to that man. I think Scott reacted back there in, uh, in just in response more than anything. Let's have a look at it. Scott shoves it underneath him. He was fine, but then lost it. Oh, ah. So Scott's fault. He was by and then lost it underneath the Japanese. A racing incident, but oh. one that the Japanese... Well, I've never seen a, a Japanese rider actually angry enough to fight, but Scott has hurt himself there as he limps that's, away. That's Takeshi limping. Oh, it is. It was Scott that went mad then. Oh, it's Kitagawa, we beg your pardon, he took out. Of course, I've got the wrong, the wrong man. Kichi Kitagawa. Well, I thought it was Scott still in the sand. <laughs> There's Scott, he was the one doing the song and dance. Hey, yeah. Scotty, from Here where it, we were... Now we'll get like, it right this time. It looked like your fault, mate. He got underneath him, that was clean, but then lost it. He's passed now. Now, did they touch before he lost it? Looked to me, know. from the overhead, it, 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 you can't really tell, it's not conclusive, but certainly it looked to me like Scott lost the rear end, whether he thought he'd been touched, and that's the reason why that's he lost it. the rear end. But the Japanese rider, Kitagawa, certainly reacted from a sitting position when Scott weighed an arm at him. Yeah. The Japanese rider as pointed to back say, and That wasn't my fault, that was yeah. yours. And as you say, it's not usual Japanese, even in those situations, are normally ultra-polite. Well, we'll get a chance to take a look at that, but of course, that moves... Slighty. Aaron Slight up a little bit further. Not that uh, that will do him a lot more good, because it also moves Carl Fogarty up a couple of places too. It wasn't quite the, um, the reaction that... Uh, Aaron Slight would have preferred. We're looking at race leader then, number 41, Noriyuki Hagar, well and truly away at the front of this field. He has got this all to himself now, with seven laps to go. Hagar has been absolutely inch perfect, as has Simon Crafar in second place. The big question is, with just five and a half laps or so left to go, can this man on the podium at the moment, the new to be world superbike champion, John Kaczynski, can he make up a place on Simon Crafar? Will he bother? Because he'll know from his pit board that Hagar, the man that leads, is so far in front, it would be risking it. Yeah, and of course, it. It, and yeah. of course, if he was to make a mistake or get taken out by a back marker or any silly manoeuvre by John Kaczynski, it will cost him the world title at this round and mean that he'll have to fight for it when he goes to Indonesia. And I think, knowing John and knowing what he said all year, he would very much like to win Honda back the World Superbike Championship at home on Japanese soil, at home for the factory, I mean, of course. And Harger Keith is going to uh, make himself so popular with Yamaha. He's won the eight hour already for them. That's a job for life. He's going to be the only guy. He's going to save their run of winning a world championship event every year for 34 years with this win. And he's going to be such a popular boy at Hamamatsu. Katsuaki Fujiwara goes through on 38. There is Carl Fogarty. Well, having a long and lonely ride around here. Mikhaila, his wife, is at home watching this today. She's not out there in Sugo. And uh, Mikhaila, well, he did his best this year, but uh, I'm afraid it looks like he's having a bit of a cruise here. I think resigned to the fact yep. that he's not going to regain the World Championship this year. He'll have to wait until 98 to attempt that. Well, John Kaczynski has looked brilliant. Carl Fogarty, well, he's looked pretty good. A little desperate in places, that's for certain, but not happy with that bike. They're concentrating now on getting it right for 98. We spoke to him earlier on. Uh, but it'll be something that he will be absolutely annoyed about if he clears off to the Grand Prix. I'm talking about John Kaczynski. Yes, and then Carl Fogarty hasn't got him to fight with next year. Carl will certainly feel that um, he's lost the chance to beat John Kaczynski. Well, Carl always says he believes he's the best rider. Of course he does. They all believe that. Yeah. And if, if this man does go off to Grand Prix, it'll deprive us of a wonderful rematch that will, uh, will be wonderful. But Carl's season, it's a season of two halves, to use the old soccer cliche. Wonderful first half of the season, then it really turned all pear-shaped. And what, four crashes, and you cannot win a world championship not finishing four races. What's the gap? 55 points before this race, Keith? You add in just four decent finishes, and uh, he'd be he'd still be in front. Well, I think frustration got the better of Carl Fogarty Definitely. this year. That is for certain. The, some of those crashes were definitely down to him, and that... Uh, well, he's reflected on since then when I've spoken to him before. 
He recognised his problems. He knows the problem with his bike. And basically, he tried a fraction too hard instead of doing perhaps what John Kaczynski has done yes. and just go at his pace and stay aboard the machine. Here's Here Alan is Alan Slight right now with number 39, Shinya Takeshi, who has had an equally good ride on that Kawasaki. Yeah, he's the man who I mistakenly thought had got tangled with Scott Russell. Wrong, the, uh, another veteran by Japanese standards. He's on a Kawasaki as well. That's why it's green, Keith. <laughs> got that. <laughs> Oh, and there's another man in the dirt who... That's Fogarty. No, it is. It is. It's Fogarty. Make that five, Carl Carl Fogarty. Well, at least he is OK. What can I say? I'm at a loss with Carl. I really am. He certainly didn't look like he was trying hard enough to be down there in the and dirt. And he was on his own. It must have been another unaided one. So, Carl Fogarty limps off. I think that really underlines the state of his World Championship year. Carl despondently walks to behind the barriers where he will be safe until Indonesia. I think we're going to be lucky to see him in Indonesia with the mood he must be in at the moment. Despondency then in the Ducati camp, a big groan from Blackburn. Mikhaila, sorry you had to be watching. This is John Kaczynski, he is the world superbike champion. John Kaczynski then is now the world superbike champion. There is nothing else to worry about. He will not yet know that Fogarty has gone out of this race. He has yet to come to his pit board where they will be hurriedly putting the fog, fog out, out yes. on the board. With four laps to go, Kaczynski is home and dry. He's in third place on bike number three. The number one plate belongs to Honda legitimately for the first time in the last four years since they attempted to take this World Superbike Championship on the new flagship bike, the RC45. Every picture tells a story. There is number four, the Ducati, the Virginio Ferrari Ducati of X world superbike champion Carl Fogarty. This year, a return to Ducati hasn't worked out, and a return to the pits by foot yet again for Fogarty as he watches John Kaczynski take the title in his first year attempting it on a Honda. Hagar, Krafar, Kaczynski, that's your top three. Takeshi on 39, under attack now from Slight. Slight in fifth place and closing. Can I offer a theory for some of Carl's uh, problems this year? Well, he's got another problem. Go on. It is, of course, Aaron Slight. Exactly. He's just I mean, about to close right in for second place. Yeah. He's not really got a problem, but Ducati obviously don't want a Honda 1-2 if they can help it going into 98. Last time Carl rode Ducati, he had Anders Anderson, probably the best suspension man in the paddock. This year, there has been no suspension specialist in the Virginio Ferrari team, and I think that's been a tricky and a missing part of the equation for the Fogarty camp. I absolutely agree. Wouldn't argue with that one little bit. I think technically they've really dragged their heels a bit. They've not uh, advanced the way that the, all the other teams have, I feel. Earlier on in the program, that's exactly the words I use, whereas Honda have improved enough. Oh. Ducati haven't really done anything this year. The modifications they've made, and Carl said earlier as well that... Uh, well, they've made too many. You, well, you can't do the, the alterations in the middle of the season. The hallmark, I would say, of the man we're watching, the new World Superbike champion, John Kaczynski, is that he puts little improvement on top of little improvement. This is your race leader, Noriyuki Hagar, doing it for Yamaha and Dunlop here at Sugo. He has been absolutely superb. Very unlucky not to win race one Indeed, today. Or have an even shot at it anyway, that's for sure. Akira Yanagawa took that. Yanagawa has gone out with a, a gear lever problem in this particular race, so Hagar has been left the entire race all to himself. It was a flag-to-flag -flag job. Absolutely. Assuming that the uh, youngster Stays on. Year old, stays on it, there's nothing daft. Well, the Let's face it, if he won the eight-hour race, he's not likely to uh, do anything daft here, is and it? And the Yamaha is pretty much unburstable nowadays. Very it's a much. fairly well-sorted, old even motorcycle. Oldest one out there. And certainly still well capable of winning in the right hand, I'm clearly. Very, and I'm very happy for David Brivio and the Belgarda team, who've worked so hard and so well with Scott Russell to make that bike competitive. I mean, Russell's been on the rostrum a couple of times, uh, deprived of his teammate Colin Edwards through injury for most of the year. And that's a major input problem for a team as exactly. well. Exactly. When they're developing things as the year goes on, you need two riders to yep. develop it, and you need two riders of a top spec, and certainly Colin Edwards was one of them. I, I, I just admire the way David Rivio's run that team. I think it's, be, it's, it's a, a lesson to us all. Well, several lessons learned this year. One is that uh, John Kaczynski, when he started the season, well, he was controversial. <laughs> we'll say he was controversial because he was controversial. He, he has always a, has been. He has a controversial outlook on things. He doesn't think so. We do. But the fact of the matter is, he's a unique character. 
who brought his own special brand of skill to World Superbikes. I and I think as the season's gone on, it's been appreciated by virtually everyone. Noticeably, Aaron Slight, for my money. He was relaxed about it now. After Albacete, Aaron yeah. Slight really did look to me. Oh, oh, look at those. Yeah, one after the other, although they were in the 30s earlier on, so 31s, he's really just cruising. That's just the consistency of the man, though, isn't it? Within a tenth right through that uh, that five lap sequence just shows you the precision the accuracy of the man yeah well that's the point isn't it it's bit by bit from john kaczynski that's his whole attitude to things when he just works and builds on things and i think the contrast with the ducati camp is they've been changing it all the way one way all the way back the other way trying to search yep. manically for that setup that well, count. last lap then hagar on the last lap now I he leads Prefar in second place. Julian's trying to get a word in edgeways. Over the line goes Kaczynski in third. Then this battle still for fourth. Place. Aaron's got a point. Aaron can do himself more, lots of good by getting past that Kawasaki. He needs those 16, what is it for? 11, 13. 13 it is. 13 for the fourth place. The 39 at the moment. Shinya Takeshi is in. So if he can get those points. 13 points, it will put him within seven points of Carl Fogarty yep. going into the final round in Indonesia. Okay. Hagar Kefar Kaczynski, top three. Takeshi Slight Fujiwara. Uh, oh, Fuj there he goes. Oh. That's it. Oh, dear me, and that must have been the barrier. Yes, it was. I thought so, because that looked as if it was a bit close. So Takeshi takes himself out. 39, Shinya Takeshi gives those extra points to Aaron Slight. And uh, really... <laughs> <laughs> that was an odd one. He lost it going in. It was in. an odd one, yeah. Got really the was. back end in the air. Got the thing fishtailed. It went straight off onto the grass. No room at all to turn it in once you touch the grass. This is oh. not a Yuki Hagar on his last lap, about to take Yamaha's only major short circuit race win of the year. And who's to say he won't do it again in a week's time in Central? Me. Through the chicane. Coming out of the right-hander. Up and over the hill, then. It's going to be Yamaha taking the win here in Hugo. That will be sweet for them. This is their favourite test track. And it's going to be a race win and a classy yes. finish. Yes. Noriyuki Yahiga takes the win, then. He deserved that. Akira Yanagawa Race oh. 1 winner is watching. Here is the new World Superbike champion finishing behind Simon Crafar. World champion John Kaczynski. There is Crafar. He could only finish second. He's still looking for that elusive win after over 100 races in World Superbike level. Here's Kaczynski, though. <laughs> but the Japanese flag is on top of the World Superbike class here in Sugo. Two wins for the home riders. Akira Yanagawa in race one. Noriyuki Hagar in race two. But we have a new World Superbike champion taking over from Troy Corsa, who took the number one plate of course, to the Grand Prix this year. Will John Kaczynski do the same? I think yes, Julian thinks no, but we agree about very little in the commentary box, but that's why we like it here. Oh, that's what makes it good fun. It's what makes this uh, sport so interesting as well. It's not just the roundy round stuff. There's all the little politics we can uh, get diverted to, but this has saved Yamaha's bacon, Yamaha's prestige this year, Keith. And you, can you imagine Yamaha, of all people, the racing factory, the man of a new have a history of That's, Yamaha. Uh, out of all the manufacturers, they're my favourite, yep. no and doubt about can it. Can you imagine being Yamaha and going through the entire season without winning a race at World Championship level? The mere thought of it is just appalling. Let's hope they come back at Grand Prix next year. And certainly I think we're going to see great things in World Superbike from Yamaha in the next couple of years. I really believe that. They have to have this bike next year, but you watch them the year after. Yeah, that's exactly with my new thoughts. Bike. Next year is development, the year after is going to be good. So that, then. Isn't that good to take this lad for a learning year when he's not under pressure to win the world championship there it is hagar from krafar from kaczynski they are your top three slight comes through the fourth thankfully because of shinya takeshi who binned it on the last lap fujiwara fifth serizawa in sixth takeda in seventh place the youngster down there rio is in eighth and sean emmett great ride yeah a one well all right a two off ride then <laughs> this is a he's joined this team just for the two races japan and indonesia so ninth for him mike hale in tenth suzuki the man not the bike in 11th Asai 12th, Kamada 13th, Igor German, at least he got a couple of points there in 14th after a lousy first race. And was that pair, Reba Cabana there getting, yeah, it was getting a point as well? Point. So uh, Cabana finishing off the leaderboard and the, the top man though, 25 points. It won't make any difference to the championship, go to him. But it is Kaczynski, the new world champion. Carl Fogarty, look at that, just seven points now between him in second place and Aaron Slight. It's going to be interesting in Indonesia. Isn't it just? 
Crafar in fourth. Yana Gower, unfortunately, <laughs> dropped back to fifth. Crafar's off to the Grand Prix next year. Keeley sixth. Russell seventh. There's a fight there as Hodson well. Hodson eight. Whittam in ninth. Von Tempe tenth. Disaster for him today, crashing on the opening corner. Colin Edwards, he's off to Grand Prix. Won't see him again this year, certainly in World Superbikes. Hale, Reba Cabana, Chris Walker, he's not out there. It's Hager that's taken his bike for this race. And isn't Mr. Hager happy about that? Are you watching when he gets on the rostrum? He's a very westernised young man, a couple of earrings in his left uh, One ear. One of your favourites here, Jules. Ah, well, Keith. Go on, spin it I up. will quote. Um, the Formula One car owner Frank Williams, who quickly, says the then, most important thing now, is the uh, the most important thing is the manufacturers' championship, the uh, riders or drivers' championship, is incidental. Yeah, but and Frank Williams think the same way. Frank Williams, in my view, has always had a slightly distorted viewpoint <laughs> on that. He doesn't care so much about his drivers <laughs> as he does the Just underlining the importance of it, Keith. That's all. If you make them, you want to see them at the top. And Yamaha, there's a few war wounds on uh, on that man's leathers. You can tell he's been in a battle or two, can't you? <laughs> yes. a tarmac <laughs> worn on the side of his. Uh, Leathers there. Plenty There's David Brivio, just shaking hands, the Italian team manager. He's going to be extremely happy. Isn't he just? And Dunlop again. Well, they're having a great day in Hugo. Race winner then, Nori Huki Haga. Who doesn't speak much English, if I remember correctly. Oh, that'll be interesting if Jonathan Green gets hold of him. How's your, how's your Japanese, Jonathan? Well, no doubt we'll find out a little later on. So then, we're in pit lane. Noriyuki Haga has taken race two. Akira Yanagawa has taken race one. John Kaczynski has taken the world championship. And Carl Fogarty walks back to the pits after crashing for the fifth time. All on his own. Yep. For no reason as far as we could see. I'm sure we'll find out why. If Jonathan Green has got a black eye when he comes back from Japan, we'll know he asked him the wrong question. But we look now at the podium. All the presentations here in Sugo. Just two races left to go. Simon Crafar comes to well <laughs> che checks the number <laughs> checks to make sure he's absolutely right second place first place though Noriyuki Haga and third will be John Kaczynski Kaczynski is coming out with the world champion t-shirt on there's Chris Herring <laughs> PR for Honda making sure he's got his dress straight yep and yep. there he is world champion John Kaczynski well, that's the biggest smile of the year. He's happy to be wearing that T-shirt. He's happy to be on a Honda. We'll take another break. We'll be back in a while with the celebrations and hopefully speaking to John Kaczynski. What a day it's been. The new world champion. We'll see you in a while. Simon でもまあ、これで去年、今年とワールドスーパーバイクの日本ラウンドは、すべて日本人が優勝しているわけで。あ、そうですね。それぞれウィナーは4人とも違うんですね。去年の武田祐一選手、青木拓馬選手、そして
but always I stay confident in myself and now I have a good team and now I can basically get back to work and start trying to get more championships and just focus on being successful like I feel that I should have been some years ago but uh, I think without Honda for me it's almost impossible. You've won on 250s in the Grand Prix, you've done the 500s, now you've won the World Superbikes. Do you feel that this is really coming on as a championship? Well, for me, you know, it's just, it's incredible all the things I've accomplished today. If you think about it, you know, it's probably the first guy to ever win GP and World Superbike titles. Um, first guy to win the World Championship on the RC45. It's just several things, you know, it's all the things that have happened to me in the past, you know, I've, I've been through a lot of adversity and I've just kept my head high and I finally got myself with the right people and now I can I can do my job. Well congratulations and well done again. Thank you very much. The new world superbike champion there John Kaczynski talking to our own Jonathan Green from Sugo and out of breath because he just finished as world champion in third place today. James What's going to happen next year, do you think? I mean, we've heard, what have you heard as far as John Kaczynski is concerned? Will he stay in World Superbikes, in your opinion, or will he go to the Grand Prix? Well, I th I'd heard, like you, that if he won, he was going, you know, 500s. At the same time, you, you can imagine that Honda would want their number one plate to stay. So, pff, who knows, really, at the moment? Having gained the number one plate, I suppose it will make some difference if Aaron Slight perhaps collars the number two plate for them. Will it? Yeah, pff, I'd... It's a difficult question, sure. I know, yeah. but yeah. I'm trying to work out the, what's going to happen to John Kaczynski because at the end of the day, for all of us, yeah. it would be great to see a rematch yeah. between Carl Fogarty possibly and, of course, John Kaczynski. There's going to be others in there as and well. And Corsa coming back. And Corsa coming back indeed. I mean, to have all the three men in, in World Superbikes next year, what kind mm. of year would that be? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. And, uh, you know, let's hope he does stay because he's, he's a beggar for the series and you've got to take your hat off to the guy, you know. He's worked along and you know, every time I've seen him on the track, he's been you know, absolutely accurate and just very impressive. So you know, he's won the championship and he deserves it, really. Plenty to look forward to then in 1998. That's it from Sugo in Japan. Just one more round in the 1997 World Superbike season. It is, of course, from Indonesia. Sentul is the track. Race one live at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 a.m., I should say. Well, another early start. That's nice for us. Race two live at 8.30 a.m. as well and uh, we're going to see everything there, you won't miss anything. But if you did miss anything this year, don't miss our fantastic review of the year. At 8pm on Thursday, October the 14th, I've seen the way this programme has been put together. It is going to be beautiful and you won't want to miss it. Get your tape recorders out. All that's left for me today, though, is to thank James Hayden for his help and comments. Thanks very yep. much, James. Thanks a lot. And to you for watching. See you next week. ブルがあったとしても十分互角に戦えたと思うんですね。え、ま、最後その作戦っていうかその流れでどちらかが先にゴールをするっていうぐらいその差は微妙なとこでしたから。はい。あの、ま、原選手にしてみれば、あの、
またねこれあの最終戦いいレースをしてポイントを増やして来年のいい弾みにしてもらいたいですよねそうですね彼はあのワールドスーパーバイクに行ってそれが楽しくてしょうがないっていうふうに言ってますんでね、えええー、もう来年最初からね、えー、上位にあの加わってシリーズチャンピオン争いをしてほしいですよねそうですね、えー、前回オーストリアで優勝した時にはあのー、愛犬を一緒に表彰台に上げてシャンパンシャワーを、えー、シャンパンファイトを行ったんですけれども、今は何かその帰国の時の検疫手続きで名古屋の方に預けてあるそうで、あそうなんでえー、今回は連れてこれなかったそうなんですけれども、えー、次のインドネシアにはまあ愛犬も連れて行ってまた一緒にシャンパンファイトを行う場面がひょっとしたら見られるかもしれません。まあ今回もその柳川選手はお父さんとそして弟さんがこの須郷に応援しに来てということだったんで、まあ第一レースの方はその。えーお父さんの前で見事に優勝するシーンを見せたということになったわけでありますさあ、すべての戦いが終わったスゴーサーキットなんですけれどもまあ、あえて言うならばちょっとね、ホガティがもうちょっと見せ場を作ってほしかったなということがありますかそうですよね、あのー、まずちょっとセットアップがうまくいってなかった、まあ、彼自身、もう一つちょっと乗れてないっていうのもあって。あのーまあ、コシンスキー選手にどんどんどんどんん有利な方に流れてしまってで、まあ、あ最後はねおそらく集中力が途切れちゃったと思うんですけどもね、えー、ああいう形でレースを終えてやっぱりドゥカティチームとしては、まあ、あのタイトルを落としたこともですけどもなんとなくこう次のレースに向けてもあまりこういい、えー、要素がなかったっていう感じですよね。まあ、スゴーで行われるワールドスーパーバイクは今回がちょうど10回目になるわけでありまして、はい、昨年、まあ、先ほど小村さんから話があったように初めて日本人が第1レース、第2レースを制しまして、えー、今年も、まあ、柳川の方はですね、えー、ワールドスーパーバイクなんですけれどもいずれも日本人ということになりましたので、はい、やはりこれはレギュラーシーズンを戦っている今度はなんかこう、えー、ワールドライダーにも頑張ってほしいなという気持ちになってきますね。<笑>もうね、あのー、ちょっと本当に偉そうな言い方で申し訳ないんですけども、あのー、いつもいつもここ日本人がしか勝ってもう4勝してるわけですからね、はいえー、頑張ってほしいなという気持ちも確かにありますよね、えー、本当にずっと外国人勢が勝っているときは日本人が勝たないかなとうう思っていたんですが、はい、こうなってくると、まあえー、世界を転戦しているその当然プライドもあるでしょうしね。そのうちの第一戦ということで、まあ、大いに盛り上げてほしいなというふうに思うわけなんですが、まあ、それほどこのコースはそのセットアップも含めて、えー、難しいということなんですよね。そうなんでしょうね、はいまあまああのーはい、ごめんなさい、えー、と今回、7位に終わってしまったんですけどもね、えー、昨年、このレースで、えー、優勝して、えーまあ、彼は実はそのスーパーバイクに乗ってから。初優,勝だった初優勝がこのワールドスーパーバイクだったんですけどね、はい、武田雄一選手、えーえー、予選第1レースとちょっと調子悪かったんですけども、第2レースではかなり盛り返してきて、7位まで上がってきてるんですね、うんえー、彼も,もう非常に若くて、えー、将来をこう職業されてるライダーですからね、はいえー、まだまだ来年はまた彼の雄姿が見られるかもしれませんし、そうですねはいまあ、全日本ロードレース選手権の方も、シリーズ、まあ、7勝を挙げて堂々チャンピオンに輝いたのはこの羽賀なんですが唯一、その羽賀を苦しめたのがランキング2位の武田だったんですよね,そうですね前半あの、ほぼ互角に戦ったんですけどもちょっと中盤から調子を崩して羽賀選手にまあ独走を許したみたいな形になってしまってますけどもね、えーはいまあ、その羽賀が現在22歳で武田に至っては19歳ですから<笑>本当にこうやって若い日本のライダーが頑張って世界の強豪相手に一歩も引かないところを見るとなかなか奥村さんも嬉しい部分があるじゃないですかそうですよね、まあ、あの後輩と言えるところもありますので、ねはい、彼らが頑張ることは本当に心から本当に嬉しいですね。そうですね、はいまあ、本当にあのー、世界を舞台にいつも表彰台には日の丸が翻るというシーンこれからは本当に何度となく見られるそんな感じがしますね、はいはまあ、このスーパーバイクに限らずワールドグランプリでも,もうそういうシーンは実際もういつも見られてますしね日本人が表彰台に立たない方が珍しいぐらい今なってますんでね。そうですよねはい、先日
GP500 の方でもね岡田選手が念願の優勝を遂げましたしね、はい、非常に嬉しいことですよね、はいえー、そういった意味で、まあ、日本のマシンとそしてライダーがこれからも世界を舞台に大いに沸かせていくことでありましょう、えー、お伝えしてまいりましたワールドスーパーバイク第11戦日本ラウンドスポーツラウンド須郷からお伝えしてまいりました第一レースの方は優勝したのは日本の柳川明選手故郷に錦を飾るシリーズ2勝目ということになったわけでありますそして第二レースの方は今ご覧いただいた羽賀紀之選手が優勝しております今日の解説は奥村さんでした奥村さんどうもありがとうございましたありがとうございましたさあそれではそろそろ都合からお別れしたいと思いますごきげんようさよなら昨年に続きまして、今年もご覧中心コースのレースが現在で TPC ビクロードレスとして開催されます。